Good evening. Let's start with our introductions because the camera's on. Um, David, why don't you start because you're way down at the other end. All right, David Chair with the Attorney General's Office. I'm Ken Schatz, the Commissioner of the Department for Children and Families. Jen Perko, Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council. Rebecca Turner, Attorney General's Office. Eitan Nasred and Longo, Chair of the panel. James Pepper, Department of State Attorneys and Chairs. Monica Weaver, Department of Corrections. Gary Scott, State Police. Brian Grierson, Chief Superior Judge. Susanna Davis, Executive Director, Racial Equity. Great, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, announcements, really easy. Sheila's not able to make it. You all sort of heard that beforehand. She's, I know she's just overwhelmed. She's just got irons all over the place. And so she really wanted to come. I've been able to sit with her and just bring her up to date on what's gone on, going on, um, get some feedback from her and things, but um, she won't be able to be here. That's all I know. But she wants to stay. But she absolutely wants to stay. She's completely committed. She's just overcommitted. So um, I just want to put that out there. But that's the only thing I have for an announcement. Anything else? Are there any yeah. subcommittees that she mentioned she wanted to work on? Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Maybe. 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 Don't want to hurt yes. Me. She will be. Yeah. She will be. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Um, the second announcement is Jess Brown is on her way a minute ago. Oh, good. Okay. Um, good. Uh, right, you all have the minutes from our last meeting, which David sent um, a little after I sent out one of the billion things I seem to have sent this one. Um, any, we need to look at those and <laughs> approve and so on and so forth, or amend or whatever. Let me make one correction. Okay. Um, page two, under my name. Um, in the first kind of paragraph, you know, it says Pepper himself understands the meaning, thinks it's accurate. I wasn't intending to comment on the accuracy, just that, um, you know, I, I went back and just kind of looked at my remarks and I was just saying that it took me a long time to understand what is meant by white, the term white supremacy mm -hmm. and that um, if we're going to use it in the report, there should be some mm -hmm. context. So mm -hmm. if we can make something, some change to reflect that. Thank you. Yeah. The one thing I had, and this is so professorial, is Captain Scott's first name is with two I R's. I did. Yes. <laughs> I just noticed that, and I was going to say Scott. That. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're doing. Sorry. I, I, I appreciate that. That felt that. really petty, but <laughs> <laughs> anything else? You could have circled that on a paper. I did, yeah. actually. <laughs> Anything else? Just a minor comment on under my where it says, uh, will not push away readers. Um, I may have said that. I, funders is also what I was talking, referring to. So readers. Which funders. page is that? Uh, well, since somebody did paginate them. We can find that person. Um, <laughs> Anything else? Anyone want to make a motion? I'll move for Dr. Anyone want a second? Monica, second. All in favor? All right. All, right. All opposed? Abstentions. Motions carried. Minutes are approved as modified. Thank you. Now we move on to much more fun. I have the honor of introducing Susanna Davis, who is, in fact, our new Racial Equity Executive Director. I thought 
we should all meet and get to know each other. She should hear us do what we do, particularly given the state of affairs that we're at of writing the report. And uh, I wanted to invite her. And here she is. So I'll stop talking. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you all for having me, for inviting me to your meeting. Um, very happy to be here and very grateful for the opportunity. I don't want to talk at you, and I do have a tendency to ramble. Um, I am coming to you from New York City, where I lived for the last 11 years. Uh, my last job was at the health department, doing work at the intersection of health and housing. Before that, I was the director of the Black Latino Asian Caucus of the New York City Council. Um, before that, I was in a deep despair after the bar exam. Um, so, <laughs> Now that we've come out of that dark space, <laughs> um, I'm here, uh, happy to be your new executive director for racial equity. I'm operating out of the agency of administration based in Montpelier at the Pavilion Building. And I have a lot of directives that have been thrust upon me. And I keep telling folks, no, no, I don't have a big job. You all have a big job. And I'm just here to sort of help nudge. So, um, so I'm looking forward to pushing off all of my work onto the people of the state of Vermont. And um, one of the primary directives that I'll be doing is doing a top to bottom review of the internal policies of the different state agencies to identify which, if any, are engendering racial disparity and making recommendations for how to correct those with the hope of reducing some of the high turnover of people of color in state service. Um, and then I'm also going to be working on creating a public engagement framework, working with government and community partners so that we can have this conversation um, without people being so darn upset about it. Um, being able to create spaces where people do feel safe to have these conversations, to make mistakes, to learn the language and to learn how to approach the issue. Um, so that we can engage more people. And I'm going to stop here, but any questions you have, I'm very happy to answer. If not, um, excited to observe the meeting. Would you remind us what the mandate is generally <laughs> and, and how um, many other community members and members part of this commission? I don't even know, is it a panel? Oh, yeah. Um, and is there a set time to regularly meet? And really, my questions are related to sort of understand and see where we have parallels and overlapping um, mandates. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for raising that because I forgot to mention there is, um, uh, in the legislation that created my position, there was also an advisory panel that was created uh, with appointees from different areas of government. It's a five member panel with a staggered term so that the, the roster is rotating, but not all at once. Um, members include Karen Richards, former uh, HRC ED, mm -hmm. um, Judge Waples, uh, Stephanie Siglino, Clarence Davis, and Andrea Brett um, are the current members of the Racial Equity Advisory Panel. They do regularly meet. The next meeting, I believe, is open to the public and is going to be on the 20th of this month. I can send along the location information for anyone who's interested in joining. Um, and that panel's directive, according to the legislation, is to serve in an advisory capacity to the person in my role. Um, because it's a new role and a new panel and new work, no one really knows what that means yet. Um, so I say, given the existence of this panel and that newly formed one, it would really be wonderful if we could align objectives um, and see where we can work smarter, not harder, um, and, and work together where possible. We've had that conversation to some degree with Karen Richards, mm -hmm. who's come and helped with our work. And she had, I don't know that we've dropped the ball exactly. I think everyone's just been very busy. And she had, because she had said there should be some back and forth between the two bodies. And we just haven't gotten there quite yet. I think we are waiting for you to be hired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now we need to move. Yes. <laughs> we're, still, we're so excited to have Thank you so much. Um, could you 
You know, I think too, in terms of fostering that exchange of, of information, as I know that we at the panel have expressed interest, and in, in maybe these public meetings, if you have the agenda to share, and we can make sure that we share ours with That's you. That's true. Yeah. Um, I mean, ideally, in ideal world, you have know, someone with enough time to go, if, the, if it's relevant. I'm not sure what the agenda is, but it just seems appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know how that panel is choosing to do with I'm assuming it's operating by Robert's rules, similar to this one, and, and all of that. So whatever the processes are, um, I'll absolutely be sure to, to suggest it to them, and hopefully we can have that, that real, I don't even know, I, I, miss, I miss state a lot of idioms in English, so you're going to have to forgive me, but a lot of that sort of cross-seeding between the panels. Right. Other questions? Comments or anything. You look like you have one. No? No, it's just my face. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never. It's a I just, just want to get everybody. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, next, then, uh, I, I sent along proposals for inclusion in the panel's report. Four pages, roughly, three and a bit from Rebecca Turner, um, and then um, a few paragraphs from Ken Chats and Karen Bassine, and I thought we should discuss those first, and then, <laughs> bless it, and then we can start doing the subcommittee stuff. Which, never mind. So, do you want to well, talk about what you, you yeah, you should, Whichever one he wants to go. Oh, sure. Okay, sure. Go for it. No, that's true. Yeah. I'm going to try to keep it from you. Okay. So, as you, many of you recall from our last meeting, when we were going around and we had some conversation about juvenile justice issues, right. um, not having been really the subject of a lot of conversation here. Um, and it is um, certainly within our charge. It's frankly why I'm a member of the panel. And I think it makes sense. Uh, to both uh, take on the need that we should, Jennifer actually was really helpful too in making that point. So the idea was to put something in writing uh, to, and, and I kept it pretty sure it looks like there's extra copies. Yeah, we, there are copies in the center of it. But, you know, honestly, uh, as many of you know, the Department of Children and Families is, is uh, pretty challenged in terms of data, but I did want to start there to see what we had. Um, and so what, I, what uh, I referenced was getting some data from the Children and Family Council for Prevention Programs. So some of you may be familiar with that entity. It comes from the Federal Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act. Each state has to have what's referred to as a state advisory group in Vermont. It's called the Children's and Family Council for Prevention Programs. It's a group of people appointed by the governor um, who do a, a, a range of different activities, including uh, granting out federal dollars. But the, one of the things they're required to do is measure compliance with the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act. One of the provisions of the act is looking at issues of racial disparity, um, um, particularly a disproportionate minority contact. So they do some analysis every year, um, and what they and so what I describe here is based on the most recent report where the, that council did identify uh, that we do have two particular areas of statistically significant racial disparity. Um, Chittenden County, um, specifically in the areas of arrest and secure detention. Um, and the second area is uh, with respect to, um, it's more anecdotal. Um, and, and, and so that's, we've, we've uh, had some communication with um, some of the organizations that work with New Americans, and, and they have described this concern about students of color being expelled from school, getting into trouble, and ending in places like Woodside. It's not, it was a bit of an education for me, I'll admit, because when I, I've certainly heard about the school to prison pipeline, but I've understood that to be more about um, sometimes schools, either uh, through their uh, teachers or their school resource officers, identifying activities, charging youth with crimes that end up resulting in criminal prosecution. That's my understanding that's not what's being described mm -hmm. here. It's a little bit different, but still relevant in that um, it has more to do with expulsion. 
um, from school. And then, uh, at least the concept as I understand it is, young people with, honestly, perhaps too much time on their hands, uh, getting into trouble and, and ending up um, in, in the juvenile justice or criminal justice system. So, so, with, uh, so those are the areas that I would put forward as things we should put in the report as a noteworthy that we should address. Um, and I did include a little bit to just to share with you what we're currently doing, mm -hmm. because this has been identified. And so the Children's Family Council, as I mentioned, does have some grant making capacity. And so to address these issues, they have provided a grant to the Association of Africans Living in Vermont and to specifically provide a mentoring program, uh, skill development programs, an after school recreation program, and on site mental health practitioner. So, so that is already in place. But what I would, thought I would just put out there was a, an idea of where we could go in terms of addressing these issues. And, and that is, frankly, first of all, understanding more about what's been described about the, the high school to correctional system pipeline. Because again, it's anecdotal. I don't want to pretend that I know more than I do. But I think it's worth looking at to see if, in fact, um, there is data to support that concern, and if so, then of course we want to deal with it. But then with respect to the issues of arrest and secure detention, um, I think it is worthwhile, and we have begun having some conversations with, uh, particularly in Chittenden County, with the state's attorney's office, the public defender's office, um, and law enforcement, um, to try to talk about how can we reduce um, disproportionate uh, arrests and proposals for secure detention for youth of color. So um, we've definitely been engaged in those conversations, so I don't want to suggest we're starting from um, ground zero, but I do think it makes sense for this panel to recognize those issues and to um, support those continuing efforts. Mm -hmm. So I'll sort of stop there, open to questions. When you yeah. refer, it, or at least in here, to secure detention, about Woodside. We are talking about Woodside, yes. Okay. We definitely, there, there is no doubt that we look at the population of Woodside uh, where there is racial disparity. Okay. The, the proportion of youth of color, new Americans, is clearly higher than um, their percentage in the population. And, and just to, to clarify, who makes the decision as to whether a Child should be in a secure facility like this. So I'm glad you answered. Yes, yes. Sure. sure. There's two. There's two ways you can get into what youth can be placed at Woodside. Um, the first is a judicial decision, and that is when there is uh, an allegation of delinquency, um, and there's a request uh, by law enforcement and the state's attorney to have that youth be confined. The judge makes the preliminary decision about whether or not the youth should be confined at Woodside. Pre, this is pre-adjudication, pre-disposition. Um, actually, in, in recent um, amendment to the law, DCF reserved the decision, because the youth is put in DCF custody, to be clear, my custody as commissioner. But, and so what we did work out with uh, various stakeholders and the legislature was that if, if DCF determined that the youth could be released from Woodside and placed safely in a community-based setting, I had the authority to do that without having to go back to the court. Because that was an issue that some of you may know about, that one of the things about uh, a court order was then people felt like you, you couldn't move the youth even if everybody felt that another placement was appropriate. And so we addressed that issue to give. So, so the answer is the judge makes that preliminary decision, but I have the authority to move the youth outside of Woodside. And what about the other part, though? Right. Can the judge make a decision, predisposition, to put a child in a place like Woodside over DCF's recommendation? Doesn't the judge So that it has to be, has thank you, no, so in fact, it has to be a recommendation on Woodside. So what we did was try to build in a variety of safeguards. So the idea is that DCF, if DCF says right at the beginning, this youth can be safely go back home, be in a foster home or a residential program, the judge can't order Woodside. Right. It has to be based on our recommendation, and then we can even then we can change our mind. So is DCF tracking at all the numbers of children who it recommends? whether it's pre or post, based on race and gender, uh, who is 
going into Woodside? So, you know, I'll have to check on that. I mm -hmm. think that's, uh, again, as I indicated earlier, our data system's pretty challenging. Um, and so it might be we'd have to do that by going back as opposed to, um, you know, in real time. But, but I think it's a great question, and I think it is really worthwhile trying to do that. And these series of questions sort of cluster around focusing on key discretionary points around Woodside mm -hmm. and who ends up in Woodside, which we know is a problem in yeah. terms of racial disparities. Uh, and of course, I don't know if folks saw the recent federal judge decision mm -hmm. a couple of days ago um, dealing with um, constraints. Uh, but the question then focusing on discretion and DCF's role in okay. making those critical decisions, um, I know I didn't have, and I apologize for that, time in advance and focused on the prosecution in general to the extent that DCF's role is similar to that in the criminal justice system prosecuting. I just wanted to draw that out. Yeah, I appreciate your yeah. recommendations, yeah. but I think there's so much more discretion that DCF has in terms of making these judgment calls right. of our clients in the system in terms of security. Right. And let me just say, because I, I do think the racial disparity issue is really important, but I mm -hmm. think it's actually been a successful effort generally to reduce the population of Woodside. Mm -hmm. um, so because it, it substantially decreased in terms of the average daily population. Right now, so last year, the average um, population was, I believe, 16. Um, it ranges from 7 to 20 um, on any given day. Um, but in fact, so that was fiscal year 18. I don't think I have the data yet for fiscal year 19, but I expect it's going to be lower than 16 because the population continues to go down um, in terms of pure numbers. But I think, again, the point about discretion is, is really appropriate, and I think it is worth looking at. So, Ken, why is this recommendation directed at law enforcement and state's attorneys? It, it does include us, and, and it, I think that Rebecca's point is right. It's just my fault in terms of um, drafting. I think we were thinking about it more in the context of arrest, or because that is a fire. That is, we're not directly involved in that. We get involved in the decision about placement. Okay. So I think it, it is a good suggestion that we definitely should add um, DCF in terms of this process. And what are the, what's the kind of the substance of, you said you've been meeting with Chittenden County state's attorneys and talking to them about alternatives. What, what's the kind so of the idea is to come up with some sort of, first of all, screening instrument, the, the other piece to have an objective approach to making these decision making to sort of in part address the issue about discretion. But it's also to make sure that we're talking together about uh, and make sure people understand the, the, the um, range of alternatives and the thinking process and actually having there been some conversation about having some sort of screening process um, as a team uh, to look at these cases to try to figure out uh, together, frankly, what alternatives there are to place them in Woods. Is the state's attorney going to oppose that? No, I've been supportive and involved. And there's some from the defender generals, I mean, the public defender's office who's been involved too, as I understand it. Is there a way to get some of this data that you talk about and also any sort of the kind of anecdotal concerns that you've been hearing? So the anecdotal, I don't have much more than, than uh, frankly, the email, but the data we can, I can provide the backup data. One of the issues we see as well in this, and not necessarily extend to DCF, it's the GAOs. The GLs who are assigned to cases. And again, anecdotal, and again, because of lack of data, where um, a family, and I call it a family wealth or juvenile delinquency uh, system, and really it's focused on the child. But in most instances, the GAL for the child is the parent and the family member. Now, I understood that in Chittenden, when the child or the fam parents could not speak English there was a default to not put the parent as a GAO to revert to one of the um, GAO volunteers. Um, there, was all, there was also concern for whatever other reason, whether it's a language barrier issue or for other reason, that a non-family member or GAO was being assigned to children of color, usually matching up on a nationality. And so the concern, of course, is, is that when you have a GAL who is so critical to providing um, insight, independent advice to the judge, right? GAO is, is um, 
is a member of the, of the judiciary. And we layer on implicit bias concerns, and, we, and, and the child is someone of color, and the jail is someone who can't relate necessarily, right? you know, just the, the racial and history exposure. That our concern, again, no data, is can we track, are there different results based on, on racial matchup? Similar issues in terms of custody placements on a secure setting, but in a foster family. Um, are siblings of color being placed together in the same frequency as white siblings who are white? Are siblings or children of color being placed with foster families of color? Right? Is there some kind of disparity there? Again, it's it's looking at the data, looking and thinking about looking for data that we haven't necessarily thought to look for. So we're so focused on Woodside, which there's so much to collect in just that context, but it's Bigger. And I know to some of this extent, to some extent, it bleeds into the chins and child welfare. I was just going to say, that the issues about siblings is very, is, let me be clear, that's not a delinquency issue. That is a very legitimate question Absolutely. regarding the child welfare system. Um, and so many of these children are in chins and, and, and their families involved. Although that was a recommendation I, I suggested, which is why don't we have the child welfare system at part of this? Mandate. Not that I want to increase it, but it seems to me that that's not immune no. to the problems we're seeing in these other areas. They're, they're different, but right. there's still a problem. And if no one is focused on that area, um, I think that's uh, okay. Yeah. So, let me, so this may be a matter of my own density. <laughs> But it's prime, what you're, one of the big things that you need here is our resources for more data collection in order to make the determinations of which we're now speaking. Got it. Thank you. OK. Anything else? So we're going to move to my OK. Sure. Sure. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So I, I think my, to pull back a little bit, I, I sent this after my initial email. My initial email provided some thoughts as to, I don't know why I sent that email, but it was, it was a question for this group, which was, are we, so I was going to give you feedback on that initial draft. It occurred to me that that draft did a, a wonderful job capturing what we had talked about for all of these months. But what we have not yet decided was, is, is that where we want to just go and produce a report to give the legislature, like, hey, here's where we've been and what we've been doing, check in, which is fine, seems fine. Or, or maybe an and, are we trying to produce a report that addresses um, high discretion points and areas in our system where we would like to suggest to the legislature um, changes to it to reduce implicit racial bias, which was, if you think about that way, I returned, and there was reference to the last meeting, Jess wrote, where um, I charted out in a really kind of a detailed, bulleted fashion all the various discretionary points from right. when someone gets into the system to leaving it, where there are calls being made by the various government actors that exacerbate the implicit bias comment. Um, if we're going to focus on that, then, sh then you know, it's just sort of more of a, how should we approach this question? Um, and then I felt, and then I threw out a lot of samples, uh, reports. Yes, those were terrifying. They were terrifying. <laughs> and, and I ran into David, uh, sure, uh, a, few, a few days after. And I said, you know, David, my intent was not to shut down and overwhelm. <laughs> In fact, what it, what it, what it did, though, is that, again, there were so many versions of a report that we may be trying to shoot for. And we had really, as a group, talked about it. I know we had uh, trouble um, the first version. And that, from my perspective, felt very much what I was shut out from being included in what should be in that report, right? Um, and so there's really no presumptions there. And then also that Law Review article I shared, which was an interesting pullback of reviewing states' 
commission's attempts at this and pointing at the various flaws, the biggest flaw being that it's so astronomically a huge project right. that it takes so many resources right. and it sits and it sits and it's under-inclusive and it primarily focuses on the problem, right? And perhaps just one part of it, a lot of judiciary um, parts. Uh, I've been talking uh, again internally and informally saying, well, how much have we collected and we're not trying to be in the field? That was another part of it. And more specifically, how much have we in Vermont and those in the system longer than I came in 07 have experienced it? I understand from Anna Saxman that there was, I think, judiciary and um, judiciary uh, leading an initiative on, on racial justice issues, and maybe I'm wrong. But she thought somewhere circa 2002 there was a report. There was. Right. I read no it. one, they did, no one, I can't find, we can't find it. Uh, okay, let me look That'll through, be yeah. That, 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 you know. Then I started looking for something, because I, I think that there are, we can spend a lot of time getting a handle of, of the situation in specific to Vermont. And that's where we spent all the months with CIG, the uh, reports that were being set in Sacramento, the detailed data we're getting from, um, Chief Del Pozo on, on the bail of Raymond's on Chittenden in courts, really snapshots of where and what is the problem. Um, these reports from other states, um, Michigan, I don't forget what Ohio State did do in Washington, did an impressive job chronicling like, how we got here, like, the history, like, how, how we are here. And so if there's any question about white supremacy or however, or whatever term, um, and that's a different discussion, how we got to here, right? How we exist in this racial, racially charged, racist society, and yet we operate in a criminal justice system, juvenile justice system, where you can't see the word race in any standard, legal standard, right? It's been stripped. So everything outside the system is racially charged and racist. You come in and all of a sudden, all of us have to apply these race neutral standards that we're prohibited from arguing even that there's been subjective motivation. It's all from the subjective, ideal, reasonableness standard of some raceless, genderless, ageless person. Identity ideal, was, ideal, right? Yeah. Which doesn't exist in the right? And and so there's no surprise that we come in and at the end we have the results that we have, which is disparate treatment based on this. Um, and how that's aggravated when it's more long uh, but so then I wanted to see, well, where are people now? Where are there so many exciting initiatives going around the country? Um, many of you have probably come across this book. I promised to bring it. I promised David I would try to bring it. He was familiar with this. Uh, Emily Basil and uh, some of the New York Times. And she linked up, I think, with the Sentencing Project Barrett Institute. I'll share this. Um, it's a basically focusing on the prosecution. Have you seen, you must have seen this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the recognition really of, of all the different government stakeholders, law enforcement, prosecution, defense, judiciary, department of corrections, um, that, that the prosecution has such an enormous role to play in terms of Problems, but because there's so much power that is held by the prosecution. And what's fascinating is reading this, of course, and I can look at all of these sort of reports around the country from various prosecution offices or the Sentencing Project that they're instituted, these nonprofits that are focused on proving the criminal justice system, decreasing racial disparities uh, and the justice system, and the solution section is always so tiny, which actually helps to read an enormous amount of work relatively quickly. That said, these bullets are truly, like, I've heard pieces here and there, trainings here and there over the months, right? They just get lost. They file away in various places that I try to pull together in some quick, some was an attempt to get at what I'm trying to do to say this group, which is to provide what I see from my experience as a defense attorney at the appellate level uh, and 
And so I, what I see from my job is, is, is all across the state, um, evictions, questions from attorneys come up and we either help at the pre-conviction stage, uh, pre-charging sometimes, and, and then of course through the appeal and the post onwards, right? So, and then we train. Um, and so these ideas come from that experience in terms of seeing where I think there are there's potential, substantial opportunity to make some difference. Uh, I know that we've talked as a group, training, internal training, uh, recruitment, being very forward on, on recruiting diversity, going out of state. It's a problem. We all love to call it a problem in our respective agencies. If we can get them out, we keep folks, right? Um, I think it was Justice Sotomayor, right, uh, who recently said, you know, we've, we've, we've spent a lot of time and money on training, um, training cops. Less, less, more recently, I think, defense bar, judiciary, prosecutors on these issues. Uh, it isn't changing the realities on the ground, right? So what can we do? What more can we do? The approach is here is, again, focusing on the prosecution because it's the prosecution that exercises and wields enormous discretion as to the footprint of the criminal justice system and and, and who and how long folks are being incarcerated. Well, critically, obviously important, are the judges who impose the sentences, defense attorneys and counsel their clients to accept plea agreements, et cetera, et cetera, of course. But this is an attempt, because my and our, all of our times are limited, um, to present some proposals that are from the beginning to the end. Um, again, trying to provide a tangible recommendations for the legislature that's a systemic approach. Mm -hmm. Not just initial stops, um, right? But why are then certain um, people of color more likely to be searched, right? Um, how do we deal with that? Well, one of these, and so I'm happy to go through these and transition to the individual recommendations. Maybe I'll do that now. That's a little too long. Set up for this list. Um, but Pepper, I, I point to you because this is taking on prosecution primarily, although a lot of this is incorporating law enforcement practices, necessarily uh, may involve the judiciary with imposing bail, et cetera. Um, but please, you know, you're boring if I keep talking, but to chime in and add things. Um, I know that on individual offices, there are certain prosecutors who are already there. Right? And look, I'm talking about the Philly prosecutor, Larry Kessler, who's, who's really just internalizing certain ideas of how to do this. There are some here in this state. Now, rather than letting that go through sort of an electoral process and allowing states to exercise their discretion, that doesn't change that, right? So the separation of powers is still maintained. However, just like the legislature can set sentences, they can also establish certain standards. Um, and so that's where, where we um, come to this. The other point is that these may seem completely crazy. Uh, maybe to some of the attorneys in the room who've been practicing with sort of the reasonable suspicion standard forever and ever since 1965 <laughs> with Terry. That, that we cannot even imagine a different reality than the reality, there was one. People would tarry with probable cause. Probable cause is a heightened standard before um, cops could uh, stop someone with uh, a warrant, temporarily detain and to frisk uh, if there was, well, reasonable suspicion, suspicion to have probable cause before. But the point is, is that these are actually ideas that are, are being tried and put forth in other jurisdictions. So, uh, first one, minimize the charging decisions impacted by racial bias. Mm -hmm. right? The legislature certainly has the ability to, to lower sentences, to change practices. Uh, <laughs> and, and so, again, the first one is just decriminalize, make it, make it, make it a law. The, the second pillar, I think, is self-explanatory. 
uh, there was a lot of ink spilled on the problems of life without the possibility of parole. The law doesn't have a death penalty. Uh, this is our equivalent. And the decision is made upon the sentencing, and it's never reviewed. And it's done. And, 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 and this, these people are sitting in languishing in jail. Uh, those two suggestions are sort of related to it, separated. There's a, a recommendation uh, that the legislature established. Uh, you know, I think I call it a commission after sentencing. Yeah. And, and so it sort of seems like it's after the fact, but it's, it's related to this, this, this first bullet. The first bullet means, you know, trying to set it up from it before you even charge, make make it a requirement that sort of low-level offenses can't be charged, right? Uh, and then on like that. Later on in, in the suggestion, which is related, is uh, some kind of panel or commission that looks back after a conviction and sentence. Um, you know, often referenced as second look laws, um, where you set a certain amount of time and maybe other things before you look back and say, oh, let's, should we reconsider that decision? Is this justice in fact deserved? And specifically in this racial, uh, this racial justice panel, a review, maybe not even threshold requirements, but if Subsequently, we learned that there was an officer involved or other reasons to suspect there was some tainting of the investigation and prosecution involving racial bias. We go actively in to investigate. Again, these are common for the Innocence Project now, but not so common in terms of just sort of standardizing regular rate review and check ins. Uh, you can do that for lengthy sentences, you can do that for indefinite term of probation, which Indefinite is a, is a nicer way of saying life uh, probation, where people are ordered for to be supervised forever and ever, and uh, the laws do allow the judge to change that. In reality, a probationer is out there, and there's no longer an attorney uh, to, to seek that additional you know, modification. And so the person re-enters the system when they trip up on one of these numerous conditions. So again, look back. Uh, second big bullet, ensuring investigation and prosecutions are not tainted by racial bias. You know, I read that <laughs> after a sentence, how does that differ from the first one? But I, I think go to the details, and I think there it's getting at raising certain standards or making standards explicit where perhaps the law has slid or there's active litigation on this front. For instance, uh, right now it is law since 1965, although it started Terry the Ohio with frisks and developed even more to allow um, temporary detentions instead of his initial risk to temporary detentions based on reasonable suspicion. The suggestion here is to have the legislature set it. At least the U.S. Supreme Court is set with the minimum requirement is in the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. There's no reason why the legislature can't just set a high standard. Um, so set it to probable cause, which is not uh, hugely different. Second bullet reflects uh, some thinking. This is about what an officer and then later a prosecutor are doing to the judge when the defense attorney has filed a motion to suppress evidence for unlawful search and seizure. The prosecutor has to argue to the judge objective, specific, particularized indicia to justify suspicion of a crime, right? Under a sort of quantum revenue. So there's legal suspicion and public cause. Here we see, and, and Zulo uh, was a case that we talked about earlier as a commission, and that was in the civil context. Um, and there, the question is, and in other cases, can the prosecutor use all well, the officers thought and saw and observed um, and dish of nervousness, flight. They were in this neighborhood, so travel patterns. Well, we know as defense attorneys and, and judges and, and, and prosecutors that it's a pretty low bar that basically if a prosecutor can point to and this evidence so supports something, something to support the, the hunch, right? Whether it's nervousness, regardless you know, of whether or not nervousness 
can be explained for innocent reasons, right, you know, whatever, or as I point out, proxies for racial bias. That doesn't come into place. It's, it's seen again in that, again, the neutral, race neutral standards. Um, and so those are, are often ways that we bypass those checks where racially tainted investigations and prosecutions should stop there and suppression motions granted. The standards don't allow it and they slip by. Right? So why not? Why not have a rule from the legislature? In fact, I heard. Uh, I heard the House Judiciary earlier this session after Zulu came down be briefed on the holdings of Zulu by their uh, legislative council. And one of the questions from the members was, well, can't we just legislate that certain factors can't be considered if this is such a problem? And I think, what was it? Sure. It's a legislator. Right? So, I, I put that, that goes into the board. I'm gonna move faster. I just wanted to yeah. say, if we're gonna go through the No, you're thing. right, you're right. Let me, let me, then, let me walk them. The second, the, the next part is, I'm gonna skip the involvement this way. Second page, sentencing factors. Um, we, again, the legislature can amend what the, Appropriate sentencing factors are right now. We have traditionally a list of factors all on equal um, basis. They can change the priority. Nathan, we're going to move faster. Guidelines that can be proposed, right? Again, those guidelines come from this book. Pretty, um, pretty, uh, from this book. So it's not just Rebecca Turner coming up with some wacky ideas, um, but vetted through various other organizations that she worked with. It's not just the general scale. The second, the last one I just want to show you, which I thought was interesting, and this is sort of the legislation that passed through Medicaid this past session. Mm -hmm. Signed by the governor, well, going into effect July. So we follow in Vermont, we have the data collection laws relating to law enforcement and staff. Right? This one is focused on prosecution. This one is requiring all of these subparts uh, the prosecution and the prosecutorial office to share and then report. Uh, I love this idea, again, because there should be transparency and accountability. And we can also see where there are problems. And, um, and like Ken talked about, knowing the problems that he's doing on the side and being able to aggressively go after it, that's great. And if we don't have an infinite number of resources, we need to do a prioritize. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was extraordinarily useful. As an East, that was, I, I reached out to Vermont ACLU to see if they could reach out to the Connecticut ACLU. I understand that the Connecticut ACLU chapter was very active in this to find out how this came about. What were the, um, what were, what did it look like before? Uh, how did they get there? How did they get so long? One question. So it's amazing. And how are they dealing with the financial resources to accommodate? Um, that work. Right. Okay. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Questions? Comments? I wanted to ask you all how to proceed at this moment because it what I was perceiving <coughs> is that Ken and Rebecca gave us some stuff to put into the draft. And do you want to vote on that? I mean, discuss that, because that was my feeling, was I'd say, we're going to put this in, and we vote on it, and if we're putting it in, then it becomes something for the grist for the next step of the process, which is the subcommittees sort of making this exactly what people want, and winnowing it perhaps down a little bit. I don't mean, that sounds so horrible, Rebecca, you've done such a lot of work, and I don't mean to say it that way. I, 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 well, it's, I, one, it's my one voice, but getting it so that it, it, it fits. Right. I, because I had, I, I was in touch with both Senators White and Ballant, because I just know them, and was asking about the report. And everybody, I mean, the first thing they both looked at me and said was, brevity. And I was, OK. And that when I first got your first email, and I was looking at those reports, one of which is 180 pages, and the other one's 40, and I went, Okay, I, hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
maybe they weren't smaller than that. And I, so I was, I'm, I'm mindful of that as well, that we have to somehow keep this um, brief. Uh, they don't want to read very much. They don't. Um, 40, yeah, and I, so, but. Are you asking if this and Ken should go in the report? Yes. I mean, I, I look at these, both these reports as issues that various subcommittees, there may be things in here that they want to look at. Right. I don't know the value of putting this report right. in the report, the report because, Thank you. quite frankly, there are a lot of things in here that is from the judiciary's perspective, right. that, that we just don't take a position on right. a lot of these issues. But I think certainly there are things in here that the various subcommittees could look at and say, well, this subcommittee should focus on with these areas, and another subcommittee may be interested in another area. And the same with the issues that Ken raised, that right. at what point in the process Thank we're you. talking about. And I think as we divided up these subcommittees, we're kind of looking at different points uh, in the criminal justice process, and that's how the subcommittees are probably going to be broken up. Thank you. That was the answer I was hoping for, something like that. So we know where to go now. And the this. subcommittees can work together and see if we exactly. can get some consensus, and we'll bring it forward to the main group. And Thank you. And see if we can get, a, gosh, agreement on something, and then <laughs> right. it's for that right. part. I believe, David, you were at that conversation that I had with I was really at that the, uh, state. Representative Burdett? That's just your Burdett. Yeah. yeah. And he basically said the same thing that Balance and White said. And then also we sort of have a soft due date in November. Did I remember that correctly? I don't remember that from that conversation specifically. Okay. But there is generally we should be getting something out in the mid fall, you know, in November right. time frame so that uh, legislation can either be drafted to begin with or current bills can be amended, you know, whatever okay. process they choose to use. But yeah, certainly I think the November time frame will want us pretty months. something. Okay. So three months. Yeah. We can do that. I think <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and as I recall from our last meeting, we have multiple reports over the variety of years that we're going to use. Oh yeah, this is the first one. It's the first one, which means we don't have to make this one be everything. Right? So maybe by the time we agree on something, hopefully that can be soon. That can be within our question for Well, that was part of this conversation yeah. too, was a certain tension, dialectic, whatever, between comprehensiveness and brevity. Mm -hmm. Because nobody wanted to be overwhelmed. But they really wanted to know, you know, broadly, systemically, where we need to move. Hey, John, just to be clear, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. I'm sorry? They're not mutually exclusive, comprehensive, and brevity. I would, you can have bulleted uh, points on yeah. every of, it, of, of seven years. I Certainly. I was simply putting forth what was related to me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was, my mother says I have no sense of humor. I get all like, oh, oh but no, he, you're right. And they were, it was just, it was a weird conversation because it was like, please tell us everything but not too much. <laughs> and I was sort of going, mm, okay, and wasn't quite sure how to take that back and what to do with that. But anyway, I think that Brian just <laughs> put it out there in a really good way. Let's just, let's just put the subcommittees together. Let's just do that. Does that seem like a good? Thank you for. All right, we have on this piece of paper, and I'll put this up. Everybody wants to be on data. <laughs> um, it, it, no, actually, not everybody, but almost. I got responses on this. Um, David and I got responses to that question about the subcommittee. I'm going to write on the blackboard in a moment. Um, from Brian, Gary, Jeff, Chief Don, Jennifer, David, and Monica. You said something to me, and I don't remember what it was, but it was verbal, which is why I don't have it. I think it was some email to David. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. So, 
Let's have a look at this. Uh, I'm going to set up what people have decided for where they want to, what their focus would be. I can be flexible. I, I put data because Rick said I should be on data, yeah. but <laughs> Rick's not sitting here. Yeah. No, he's not here. Let's see what it looks like. Sorry? Let's see what it looks like, and then maybe we can Rick on data. <laughs> oh no, I'm Rick's says it me now. You got one. Y'all are stuck with me. I would put it that way. I would. Yeah. I <laughs> I apologize for my handwriting.
But it's useful to have that up there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I'm looking at you because you guys are the experts here. So we've got <laughs> so to get the people. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hmm? what, 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 people, what people should be in? Or what subject? subjects? Court involved. 
So like a lot of those pretrial diversion, Tamarack decisions, ideally should be happening before you're making something go in front of the judge. Yeah, they're not, they're pre um, Or they could be post. They can, but it's charging. So it's the charging decision. We are right. What did you say? Investigation or prosecution? That's it. I think it's yeah. I think it's I think it's part of the charging decision, and to me that should be the it's beginning. It's beginning. Yeah. So look, there's like a transition. It starts with police involvement, which leads to prosecution involvement. They make their decisions to the extent they can without anyone else involved, and then the next step two would be at a range where now it's prosecutors, judges, and defense attorneys. That should cover you from arraignment through either trial or plea. There's almost more mm -hmm. issues involving plea agreements That's than there are the actual trials. Um, and then when we get to the end, it would be sentencing, which now involves corrections and reentry obviously involves. Well, we're involved all along there on certain degrees because even when we're in pre-trial if detention right. we're involved in that no i'm not suggesting saying, you know there's a lot so i can't be in all those groups but <laughs> i like it so children's the only standing room and everything else will be beginning middle end i'm wondering whether we should just i'm thinking i'm just spewing we should start with just those three, which are just wonderfully Judeo-Christian, and with juvenile. And then when you meet, things are going to fall where they need to fall. That's, a, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Because we're, we could sit here for another two hours and do this. Right. Um, and that's just not particularly productive, because we have to figure out when you're all going to meet. So um, I would suggest that, and then it's possible later on, even though November isn't as far away as in some ways I would like, um, that people shuffle. You know? I mean, between, between the Mark, subcommittees. Yeah. Monica's going to be on all. She is, it's true. Monica, you're quitting, you're just going to do subcommittees. Okay. <laughs> will, you, will you call my boss? I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, David, okay. I'm just going to make a proposal. Veronica, you can come with me to how we track the ideas. I can't be in all of the um, committees taking notes. Oh, dang, so if we can, you'll quit. Yeah. If we can have one person who's willing to be a reporter. It doesn't have to be like verbatim notes, right. but just like the big ideas that are coming out for each committee. Yeah. And if that person can remain responsible for that throughout the process, right? Because there may be some people who are on the beginning committee, but have ideas about the end committee or whatever it is we're going to call them. Um, they can then know which recorder to go to to say, hey, by the way, I wasn't in the committee meeting, but I'd love to just like throw this in there for you guys to discuss or a future meeting. I'd like. So there's one person who stays responsible. It doesn't mean that they can't contribute to other things. No, of course. Stays responsible for the thing. I can do that for one of the. I'll be on your page. That was really. <laughs> um, I, yeah, and then. Forward them to me, and I'll be the clearinghouse for all of it. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, if November is an end goal to produce some, see where we can get to find consensus. I think. Or not. Yeah. Leaving us October for the. Yeah. Um, that's that's what we're looking at. By November, mid-November, that would be enough to get us over. Yeah, I mean, I think that's as early as possible, but I think that would be okay. And then a final product in December will still give them time to mm -hmm. put it into legislation, mm -hmm. don't you agree? They can just put a, a bill number on some, right. they can just right. have a like empty vessel pretty much. Right. Yeah, they have all these deadlines that aren't real. Right. You should, right. Treat, right. You should treat them with respect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you should <laughs> 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 Two September October. Right. Yeah, there are like thirty. So we could do it. That's four 
24 hours. That's, well, or, well, that's one, right. that's one way of approaching it. The other is, I mean, the, is people decide what they want to do right now go into little corners of the room and figure out when you're going to meet. That's another option. I think we should do that. I mean, there are two, there are two proposals here. One is that we use our next two meetings. Mm -hmm. Remembering that next month, Stephanie Seguino is coming to talk to us about legislative um, Things around data that should, she feels should be presented to the legislature. She asked to speak with us. So she'll be coming next month. That's the only thing we have, though, on the agenda. So I, I can just, we'll just talk to her, and she'll come in and tell us. Well, that's nice to have And then we can sit down and. It's not the whole meeting. Pardon? It's not the whole meeting, you're, because she's going to. Well, she won't, no, it won't take the whole meeting by any stretch of imagination, I don't think. So I. Could we make the committees this meeting meet next meeting after Stephanie's done and then decide at that point if we need to meet outside of Lovely. meetings? Lovely. Lovely. Right 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 I love that. A midpoint. I'm always into that. So. Just, I, not that I love more meetings, but that's, you know, a whole month from now. Yeah. Whenever work gets done. And that's, you know. I think we should meet in subcommittees now, start talking about what the substance is. Okay. With reference to the thing that you've already written. I don't want to, like, let's use that as a baseline. I think it's a good, it's a good baseline. We don't want to start recreating the wheel. Um, so let's, you know, we have 35 minutes or so to mm -hmm. start that. The subcommittees will have a better sense of what the work is that they are going to be tackling and what. Uh, you know, needs to be altered or changed or whatever from what you've produced. Okay. And then um, those subcommittees can make decisions on phone call meetings or whatever they feel is necessary or not between now and the next. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to, I mean, I no, think it's a reasonable no. idea, but, you know, we are. That's I true. Don't I don't think it, it does, <laughs> like, we do lose a lot of time, which Rebecca's kind of, uh, she's here sort of playing out, we need to make the most of. So, so do we have four subcommittees that we have mm -hmm. juvenile as its own thing and then we have to get in Yeah. So now uh, I guess we don't need this.
right, so. But let's, let's no, just, yeah. I'm with you, but we're just sitting there. Because I would like to rotate on all four, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good. Sure. No, I, I, I mean, the thunder chicken wasn't interesting. But I think we should st start with this. All right. What? And then. I don't want to say it's fine. I think it needs to be a reporter who's always yeah. responsible for one committee. It doesn't mean that a reporter can't also say things to other reporters, but that'll just keep some system in place for gathering all the great ideas that are going to be. I will be the reporter for my end's committee. Oh, where are you? Uh, the end, you are. the <laughs> <laughs> That means reporter. So, so let me you know. Okay. Let me get this for a second. Stepping back, are we spreading ourselves too thin? That is, would it, and I'm sort of including even the juvenile section. Should we prioritize? I mean, looking at these committees and frankly, how few people there are on each one, would we be better off just picking two? And prioritizing. I see. Because I'm just. Like, I'm trying to make earlier. I'm sorry. Like, I was trying to say. Yeah, okay. Earlier. I mean, I'm just. Yeah. I, I'm. You know. Just. I want to put it. I don't know. There's value to covering the whole territory. Exactly. I get that. Exactly. Don't get wrong. But I'm just thinking, if we really want to do something by November, would we? Would it make more sense? See, well, I, along those same lines that we mentioned earlier. I mean, this committee isn't ending in November. That's right. Continuing. So maybe we are focusing on the beginning. You know, the pre trial and up to a right and focus in on that. Knowing this, that the beginning will probably get the chance of legislation yeah. only being produced. Right. Yeah. So we're not spreading out even our proposals too broad. I mean, we're focusing okay. on the beginning of the process and then okay. later okay. on. I like that idea too. The only it's thing as a whole, you're saying, right? Yeah. So, maybe. Well, well. I'm asking. <laughs> <you know, laughs> Your level then, okay. and then the first step where the court is involved is arraignment and, and bail, and then we stop the process That's there a lot. for now. That is a lot. That's a lot. So just yeah, getting it off. Yeah. But it touches on yeah. all the decisions yeah. that are made, yeah. including detention, which involves yeah. 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 So, yeah. And Ken will we'll factor in the juvenile. Yeah, and then in that context, we can do a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 Process at the beginning of the process. So, so okay. Just take a picture. Of that. I mean, yeah, it's not it's not a good idea, and it actually captures a lot. It also makes sense as an initial report to the right. legislature. Yes. Like, we're going to begin at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which it, there's a huge amount of. But. So shall I vote? Write that up when I had written before and erase. No, no, no. no. I think we can yeah, do no. it differently. <laughs> Or should we do law enforcement interaction, charging decision by prosecutor, oh, alternative okay. justice? So, yeah, yeah, I think we could do it. Yeah, we yeah. yeah. more perspectives, more input. Yeah, I like that. We're going to end up having to vote like on the report it. anyway, and if we're all arguing with each other <laughs> at the beginning, we'll save a lot of time at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What am I writing? <laughs> what am I doing now? Basically, We're going to do the beginning. beginning. Everything at the beginning. Up to including a rating. Okay. And then we're all in for a penny. A rating and being like pre-trial charging. Yes. It will encompass yeah. pre-trial service. Pre-trial cause determination. Right. Or charging whether or not the trial is over. And detention. Oh, I mean, detention. It, it, people are saying things. It's like yeah. asking you to to make that into what was at the beginning. Like, okay. So what everything, everything that should, we should be, everything we consider at the beginning. What am I doing? I want to do it. Because Rebecca's taking a photograph. So it's so like Rebecca, this, so this yeah. other email may be a yeah. good jumping off point. I think Rebecca did a good job. Can I help you, Rachel? You this certainly one. can. <laughs> All right, let's creep down. No, I, or did you take a picture of this? I did, erase it. Or we could shoot it up. We can just shoot it up. Um, all right, so for now can we erase 
middle and end. Yes. And we're just going to figure out what we need to address. Um, we'll leave that up there because we're going to have parallels, right? Oh, the There's tons of All right. So, okay, I'm going to erase these right now to you. Okay. So, and, so, what do people consider to be part of the beginning? I mean, I think it starts with the police interaction. Yeah. What does that include for two people? I mean, stop, searches, stop, search. search. Uh, Citation, arrest. arrest. And then something that isn't really, it's the post arrest um, custody. Yep, custody. I mean, the midnight call. Oh. Charging decisions? Is that another? That's the next step. Yeah. Um, you said diversion decisions? I don't know if that's so I think the diversion. I would say generally like alternatives to prosecution. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. It may not be necessary to get absolutely every moment down, but get a general right. arc. What else? What else is part of the beginning? Uh, bail. Or well, we're not in court. Is there so I answer that. Like, custody, detention. Yeah, like who's who's when I mean, you judge hears and gets the call. Right, he's going to have at a late night call, and then the state's attorney the next day decides he's not going to charge or divorce right. it. So I think we're so involved, but not, not, not in great detail at that point. Um, and we've got a little list up here, but so what are the parallels? I mean, the same thing is. Same issues with regard to police interaction, right? Yes. Um, sure. yeah. Yeah. I think all of those things you listed apply to general side. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. Not, so at least my take on it, there's really no difference. I want to roll out the social worker, DCF, in terms of the police get involved, but then the police will refer to some. So that's only when there's the custody, detention, bail category. All right. So there is a new player in there that's not necessarily identified. But it's not a separate step. That's how I look at it. But, it's a, well, but maybe that's what the school comes in. Mm -hmm. I don't issue of, school type yeah, no, I, yeah. I, can, I had the same thought as you. I was looking back at Rebecca's um, email that she sent the other day mm -hmm. that sort of summarized the previous longer list she had written. Is there anything else, if you look at that email, is there anything else? That you listed, that would, that kind of thing would go into the beginning section. I'm going to float the possibly unpopular idea that that's enough. I mean, <laughs> brevity, right? Yeah. Um, so, and not by now more than we can shoot. Will someone take a picture of that? Yes. Look at this. This is the beginning. Now we're going to do. No. Uh, Susanna has a thought. Can I interject a quick thought in here? Yeah. There's, I guess, one difference between the two that goes through this whole thing. Yeah. 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 We can really look into this as a group, but it's worth thinking about is the public engagement that we have around these issues. For example, um, when a person's arrested and it ends up in the media, are we using um, class photos or mug shots? Are we discussing um, um, suspects as belligerent or as emotionally disturbed? And a lot of times those things tend to cut across race lines. So maybe the way that we engage the public and the media around these issues 
in the beginning stages, which often impacts the public and potential jurors' um, opinions at the later stages. <coughs> I know that's an entirely different and huge uh, ball of wax, but. It certainly captures the screening process that you have been working on, right? Too. Okay. Super broader than that, but. I mean, I'm not looking for an answer, just kind of yeah. right. throwing that out. And also, I mean, just so we don't forget, sorry, um, the other thread that I think we should be asking ourselves at each stage, beginning, middle, and under, like with each topic, is what data do we need? Oh, what right. data are we ask, Are we going to recommend we should be collecting? Should we write that down? So, um, okay. so, I like the public safety idea. Let me just say, I do I mean, I think it's relevant yeah. to the pre court involvement because sometimes DCF, so really the state police, we do have a practice of sometimes issuing public statements. And I think it's a good question right, uh, to look at. The press release is correct. And I like Rebecca's notion, Rebecca's thought on the complaint, because why is this person why complaining right. or contacting law enforcement about what this person is doing? Is it because they're bashing down their mailbox with a baseball bat, or is it because they're walking down the street and they're suspicious? Mm -hmm. So probably. now, <laughs> how is this a subcommittee? We, we, we possibly threw out the idea of a We threw out the subcommittee, so we're now meeting as a whole group about all of this? Okay. Just wanted to know where we were going. I, I still think there's a way, and there's a model, that, that breaks down all these into into groups. Should we don't just, we had one other thing we wanted to try to focus on there, that was the chart and the arraignment. Yeah. Well, I think the custody detention bail kind of, we've got to find capturing that. Well, I think that was more, that custody detention bail was more of a late night call. Yeah. yeah. Right. This is pretty late. Right. Until we want to, as we look at this, maybe we start with this. All right. And see how far we get. If we get through it, then we'll go to the next step, but I think it would, Try to do too much. I feel like arraignment is on the cusp of be, uh, beginning and middle. And I, I've been thinking about beginning. It's everything pre, literally pre walking in, like pre going in front of a judge. Although, like if you are held in custody after you've been arrested, you're going to go in front of a judge the next day. But I've just been thinking about beginning because everything before you actually go into a courtroom. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think you're right. There's a lot to choose. There's a lot to choose. Could somebody encapsulate what we're doing? Because I'm like really confused right now. <laughs> what we're doing, what this is, is every discretion point. Yes. Right. So I think the idea would be to look at each discretion point and look at how implicit bias might creep in and how we either okay. capture data around it or try and just deal with it outright. Okay. Right. Recommendations I, about what things that we think could change around that intercept point. So are each one of these, how, do, do these separate headings in some way dictate subcommittees or are we done with subcommittees altogether? My sense was that we were going to collectively look okay. at these areas and try to come up with a report. I mean, these. I think everyone on this committee has a role in understood more or less in what's up there, so it would be a starting point. Great. Then we need to decide what the next step is between now and the next meeting and for the next meeting. Dr. Craig, I, I present, I came up with some bullets. I would love to hear what others have for tangible recommendations. Um, on these points, start 
compiling and then discussing and wiggling and adding and then, yeah. Yeah, I think if everyone focuses on this area. Okay. Start with some suggestions. So the homework would be to go off and as individuals talk about each one of those headings from your vantage point. See where you fit into the decision. Right. I'm sorry. I'll send her an email with this also. Um, so I know we're taking a picture, which is great, but for folks who don't have a picture, you'll get this. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And there's a lot of these bullet points, actually. Do they do? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the other thing is that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did you just um, I was looking back at your draft. I mean, I think. Which is really, I'm hoping not my voice, but yeah. You is your compilation. Right. Um, and I think one thing I'm thinking just as we go forward, some of what you wrote I think it is good as like an overview, and then I think we can fit this in. Sort of, all right, these are some of the principles that I'll spend time talking about, and then we focus in, and this okay. comes underneath that, and these are some of the specific thoughts we came up with and are informed by a lot of the discussions we had around discretion, uh, okay. data collection, and all the other stuff we spent a long time talking about. Okay. If that makes sense to folks, this is a way to envision how to construct this in the floor. Well, because it gives them the comprehensiveness that they were looking for around what have you guys been doing for the last right. bit? Right, then, right. And obviously all of this is what the legislature's been talking about for the last two years, and yeah. continue to talk about. Mm -hmm. so. So we're, so we're going to go off and everybody's going to go from, look, well, David's going to send this out to everybody. And I guess we're going to put, what, another round of bullet points together that intersect or interface with the draft as it exists at the moment? Well, I think we'll focus in on, on this and okay. have people do suggestions specifically with respect to this. Okay. Uh, and I think we can hold the overall draft in advance until we have something Great. to decide on this and then figure out how to integrate it. I think some of what you've written will probably be dropped into here and some Great. of what you've written will remain separate. Um, and some, we can get a lot of that. Okay. Does, does that make sense to people? I just wanted to get a boom. Yes, I'll wait for you to send this out. I plan to chop up a lot of these bullets and put them in. Right, because a lot of the stuff that you And then yeah. share, and then possibly come up with more, and then share with everybody. I, and I, I'm not what? a computer person. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I've heard of these things called Google Docs. Is it too soon? Would it be crazy to like start some sort of mm, Google Doc certainly. that people could Sheila like, asked add me to, to put the draft as it exists now on Google. She asked me that last week, and I'm now figuring out how to do that. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I can't do it, but... I know people who can figure that out. I know. Well, I mean, I can figure it out. This state highly frowns upon Google Docs, is all I know. Yeah. I will. This state has... This state highly frowns on it, and so, like, you know, I couldn't do it. I don't there know that. I don't work for the state. state. Who can do it? I... I <laughs> I think most of the agencies probably use Microsoft yeah. or Outlook as yeah. its base. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think Outlook, the online platform of it, might have something similar so to Outlook that, that, that may that may comply so you can use your work emails yeah. and right. Well there's okay. there's teams that can oh, be set up. Yeah, and then there's loads more complicated. Yeah. 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 And then there's SharePoint, which is also complicated. It was yeah. so complicated. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't even successfully give us a training on it. <laughs> but, awesome. Okay. Um, well, so the idea of being some sort of shared document that when we're ready, that maybe people could add to. I will spend my time learning about that. Otherwise, right, you're going to come up with all of these versions and track changes, and exactly. someone has to merge them, right? Yeah, yeah. The whole document has to work on. Okay. I mean, I also think 
um, at least initially, what we can do is, you know, everybody comes up with points. If you want to preview what like other people put in, um, we can just have a big, messy document mm -hmm. where it's just cut and paste. All the, everybody's stuff is in there, so you okay. can have a sense of where you're going to fall on certain issues, where we can come to consensus on things. Um, I wouldn't worry so much about the editable Google Doc right now. I think mm -hmm. we can do that later. Later. Just so long as we get a preview of what everybody's thinking. Mm -hmm. So, send these to me, sure. and I'll compile something for next meeting. I mean, I, I can just send them, well, it's up to you. I can send them out to everybody so people have the reference, um, and people can send their stuff in to me, and I can work on compiling a big okay. document. Hopefully we'll have that out, say, like a week in advance. That's what I was going to say, that if we're going to do that, we really have to have a deadline. I'm sorry? I said we need serious stuff. I need a serious stuff. Yes, I, I agree. I was just going where Jess was going. We need a real deadline for everybody to have their comments on this before the next meeting. The next meeting is the 10th of September. So the week before that is the 3rd, right? So how does it sound that people have their points to David no later than the third. Does that give us enough time in the week between the third and the tenth to consider each other's work? The day after Labor Day. Uh, yeah, so it is, that's Labor Day weekend. Um, I mean, I'm personally going to set my deadline as the 30th of August. Okay. So that's what I'm putting forth. The deadline is the third. For those of us who aren't really doing anything, <laughs> for the weekend, we but just don't do. Right. I would it. It's a sort of a nice brainstorming popcorn effect, right? Um, didn't think about it. Why not this angle? Oh, no. Great. So are we sharing them with everyone, or are we just sending send them to David? Send it to David. Oh, send it yeah, to David. That's how I understand. And David will compile them, and David will get them out. And if David needs help, David knows Aton's address. So, yes. Um, so, David, will you compile and send it out to the room ahead of our meeting on the 10th? So we yes. So we'll plan to do it by the end of the day, I'm up there. Yeah. So, that, so yeah, right. if you have it to me on the third, I'll just do it in the afternoon. I've just blocked off a couple of hours that day. So I just want to ask for clarification when you say points. What are we yeah. asking That's us to do? Yeah. So it's a recommendation, which I think of recommendations. I just want to concrete wrap. I almost see this as two, and I guess I want to, two aspects of points, if you will. First of all, what data do we want or need if we don't already feel like there's enough? And then the second would be, are we want to put forward some recommendation to address um, issues to put on the table in these categories. Okay. Yes. With that, with that, I just want to thank you. Yes. Are we all clear on that then? Just to follow the statute, it should be recommendations to address systemic racial disparities. Is there something on data separately in the statute? I don't remember that. I don't know. Um, I don't make the there's, yeah. Somehow, you know, there is, like, whether to expand law enforcement race data collection practices. Right. Right. So we could, we could go on with that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Are we, we're good? Everybody's clear? What the homework is between now and the third of September. Okay. I'm assuming that these are going to talk to us about the same place we're going to be focused on. Pretty much, she's it's going to good. talk a lot about data. She's going to talk a lot about data. So this actually is nicely synergistic, um, and uh, she will. She said to me last time we talked that there was some reading 
around that, that she, not an onerous amount that she wanted us to consider. She will forward that to me. I will certainly disseminate it to you. I will get in touch with her ASAP to get that so that you have it as soon as I can get it to you. Um, on that point, if anyone else has some interesting things they come across in our respective capacities on this issue, also, I would encourage I'd love to hear. I'd love to, like, if you see something, just so that we don't have to spend a lot of time getting up to speed, catching up when we get to these bullets. Um, there's so much out there. Well, I'd love that, for instance, I don't know what's hitting your radar, you know, from other things, from the prosecution issues. One of my prosecutors are telling me that things like the Yazi have a socioeconomic bias that disproportionately impacts you know, people of color and all this stuff. Yazi? It's a youth assessment screening instrument. Thank you. So uh, what's these the happen. If that but is the problem. Right, I don't know. I mean, that's. There aren't any. I'm just going to say, there's, but I mean, that's obviously important information, though, if that's yeah. a perception. Mm -hmm. It's not a real right. so There's a study I mean, on it. Obviously, it does, it's statistically been validated, but right. that doesn't mean right. um, that there aren't issues or problems. Right. So, mm -hmm. that's what's okay. Well, the issue with most risk assessments that include any criminal history on them are generally considered not to be implicit bias. what? To have a bias built into them because, because it already includes history. criminal history information, which has is itself is itself biased. Yeah, okay. bias. So yeah. inheriting another jurisdiction. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Right. Embedded risk. It's better. Yes. I mean, that would be interesting to see if um, Stephanie will address that. I mean, I don't know, but I think that's a really important data question or it's related to Let's that. ask her. Yeah, because there's the, the whole notion of screening tools, there's so much yeah. um, emphasis on them now. I think it's a really good point. And, and so mm -hmm. let's ask her. I mean, she, yeah. she, I mean, I don't know the specifics of what she's coming to do. But. Yeah, does she have that? So I don't know much about Stephanie's background, so I don't know how much. She knows about a screening lot. tools specifically. I don't know about the screening yeah. tools. Okay. I don't know about the screening tools. That's really relevant because we're trying to find objective ways to make these decision points. Right. Right. And, and, and if the tools are tool using, farm. <laughs> there's been lots of conversations in other, which we can bring to this, but there's lots of conversations in other around pretrial, particularly, right. and some assessment tools in the pretrial world mm -hmm. that have, like the Arnold's tool that the PSA, that apparently takes out a lot of the okay. built-in bias, and then there's the ORAS tool, which has the criminal history. I would think realize that assessment tools are beginning, middle, and end. Like they're, they're, oh, they're yes. all right. Right. Yeah. 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 everywhere. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. I would, it would certainly be something we could at least ask for where to go. Well, that's yeah. and that's what we're struggling with right, right. now. The traffic stop that are like we have this trooper and he falls in this category, but what does that mean when you right. look at all of the you know, his videos, the ticket, the rest, the nuts right. and he's falling in this he falls into this category. Right. So, so how do we move okay. what corrective action is going to take? Would, all right. would you be able to give Stephanie uh, a little bit of advance notice to some of these questions? Yes. In case she's not prepared? Yes. All you know. Take advantage yes. of yes. her nature. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say, there's a lot out there on the screen. Sure. I was just sending me all these things to be the one that does that. Yes, I will. Thank you. Because the dilemma is, what's the alternative? There is no alternative, right? I mean, nothing's perfect. We all appreciate that. Okay. That's it, Ken. Nothing's perfect. And I think that people who actually think about these things do try to get what they think is the best, like the most neutral, so to speak, tool, and even those are in the right. right. Okay. All right. Well, in the, anything else before I do chair things? Okay. <laughs> in the six minutes we have left, there's obviously not much public commentary. Um, don't think there's any new business, because I think we just did it. <laughs> like, what I'm supposed to say to Stephanie before she's talking to us. The next meeting, again, is the 10th of September. The homework, I just love saying that, is um, due on the 3rd to David, um, unless you're Justin, it's due on the 3rd. Uh, um, 
Anything else anyone wants to try? Uh, the last time we got together, we were talking about not at this point, putting together a pamphlet about rights. And I told you there was something put up by the BBA. I don't oh. know if anyone has ever seen this or if they want to see it. I do. It might be worth looking at it mm -hmm. now because it's it's out there and it's like, Look, it's great. Yeah. Great I can get more of them. Um, Is it online? I don't know. I yeah. took them from this is, material. Do you want to look first? Or, and I'll, okay. I can get yeah. some more. That would be great. Yeah. If we I'll could. Get some more. Thank you. Some of the next. There's a hashtag. Yeah. There's a next. There's a hashtag on the cover. It must have just been printed. I love this. It's like 2019. Yeah. This is great. I don't okay. know how long they've been doing it. Just see what you're doing. Yeah. Go for it. How are you doing? Let me not get. I have to. All right. The, the right. only other comment I would make is I hope everyone appreciates it by narrowing the focus, keeping everyone together. David gets to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. We don't get a lot of credit for volunteering. Well, I'm not suggesting yeah. that. Was That's the fine. Thing. I don't need any credit. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was the diabolical and brilliant. It worked. 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 <laughs> All right. You didn't Thank you. That. that was really that was really kind of hair raising, and I don't have much, but that was really great. I mean, it was very organic. I had a few moments where I was like, "What in hell is going on?" But there it was. We we actually came up with something as a group that worked really well. Everybody satisfied, at least for the moment. Yes. Anyone want to make a motion to you know? Yeah. Wow, that happened really fast. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? I'll shoot you. Okay.